Hello my friends and welcome! In this episode I will test some of these thermal switches and I will show you a few ways how you can use them to add some protection to your projects. There are two main types of thermal switches, normally closed and normally open. So this is practically a small relay which is triggered when it reaches a certain temperature. The rated temperature and current are written on the switch capsule. Let's say you just made a battery pack using a simple BMS protection board like this. But you also want to add temperature protection because you don't want the battery or other component to heat up. You can use one of these simple bimetal switches. But is it really good enough? And how precise and safe is it? Let's test it with a simple circuit. We have a big LED in series with a resistor to limit the current. I will solder a 30 degrees Celsius normally closed bimetal switch and the battery holder. The circuit will be powered by a 3.6 volts lithium ion cell. The LED turns on because this is a normally closed switch. This thermal switch is rated at 30 degrees Celsius. My skin cannot trigger it. It appears I'm not hot enough. We need something else. Let's check the boiler. The water temperature is 47 degrees Celsius. It should be good enough for this test. By the way, if you want to see how to add a simple thermometer to your water boiler, I made a video on my Patreon page. You can check it out and you will also find more DIY videos available only for my patrons. Now let's use a cup of this hot water to trigger the thermal switch. I will use a digital thermometer to measure the temperature of the water and how quickly the switch will be triggered. When the switch detected that the water temperature is above 30 degrees Celsius, it turned off. That's actually pretty fast, it's a good response time. I thought it will take longer. So, if your integrated circuit or other component heats up, you can use a thermal switch like this to disconnect the power source, like a simple thermostat. I let the switch capsule cool down to room temperature and when it drops below 30 degrees, the switch turns back on. But what about thermal protection for a battery? This is a small battery pack with a 2S BMS board and a battery holder. The wires are connected like this, so the circuit is closed only when the battery is below 30 degrees Celsius. For this test I will use some old and abused lithium ion cells because I plan to heat them up a bit. I will place the switch between the cells and hold it in position with kept on tape. Let's add the thermometer sensor in the same place. The battery pack is ready, but before I add a load, the BMS needs to be activated. I just need to connect an 8.4 volts charger for a second. There we go. I will use my constant current load tester to discharge and heat up the battery. And I will also add the LED so we can easily see when the battery thermal protection kicks in. And here we go. I will increase the load to 3 amps, which is pretty high for these old cells. Now let's stand back and watch how the thermal switch will disconnect the battery when it goes above 30 degrees Celsius. The battery is disconnected at 26 degrees. What's going on? Ah, these cells are dead. The battery voltage dropped in a few seconds and the BMS over discharge protection saved the battery. I need better lithium ion cells for this test. There we go, I changed the cells. I'll connect the LED back and let's redo the test under the same conditions. The battery is fully charged at 8.4 volts as you can see. The load current will be set to 3 amps again. These are not high drain cells, I think they are salvaged from a laptop battery. So with a 3 amps load, these cells will heat up in a few minutes. I will fast forward the video. The battery temperature is rising, but keep in mind that the thermometer sensor has a very small contact surface with the exterior of the cells. So the temperature inside the lithium cells is actually a few degrees higher. We are getting close. At 29 degrees Celsius, the load is disconnected by the thermal switch, or should I say thermal protection? It took 3 minutes for these old cells to get to 30 degrees. I let the battery cool down. 
After a few minutes it dropped below 28 degrees and the switch reconnected the load. You can actually hear the click, similar to a simple relay. But the switch disconnected the load when the thermometer measured the temperature of 29 degrees, not 30. I know these switches aren't perfect, but I wonder if this is because the switch sensor is bigger and flat so it makes a better contact with the cells than the thermometer probe. To test this theory, I will add some thermal paste between the thermometer probe and the cells. And I will also add some small pieces of wire to push the probe onto the cells for a better contact. I set the constant load to 3 amps again. The thermometer probe has a better temperature transfer now, so it detects a faster rise in temperature. The switch is 2 degrees behind now because it doesn't have thermal paste. So at 32 degrees, read by the thermometer, the switch turns off. For bigger loads, there are thermal switches rated at 10 amps and even 16 amps. So, yeah, you can add a simple bimetal switch as a thermal protection for your battery. It has a good response time, it's pretty accurate and very cheap, or should I say affordable. You can use it in the same way for a heatsink or other component that heats up, with a small issue as I will explain in a few minutes. But what about normally open switches? This one is triggered at 40 degrees Celsius. So I made another simple circuit with a battery pack connected to a fan. The circuit is open at the moment, but if you have a heatsink or any component that you need to cool down, the switch will turn on the fan when it measures a temperature of 40 degrees Celsius or higher. And after a few seconds the temperature drops below 40 degrees so the fan is turned off. This is a cheap way, for example, to cool down the integrated circuit on an amplifier board for a portable speaker where you need to preserve the battery but also to protect the components from overheating. But what if you want to turn on the fan in steps depending on the temperature? I will use three normally open switches with 40, 50 and 60 degrees Celsius. To change the fan speed, I will decrease the voltage using some rectifier diodes connected in series, because each diode has a small forward voltage drop. This is an 8.6 volts charger, and the voltage after the diodes in an open circuit is 5.8 volts, but with a load connected, the voltage will drop even more. So I made a small circuit using the three thermal switches and some diodes according to this schematic. The fan voltage will increase in steps depending on the temperature. The components for this circuit cost about $1. I connected the contraption in series with the fan. The first switch will turn on the fan, but at a low speed because it's in series with all the diodes. At 50 degrees, the second switch will short a few diodes, so the fan voltage will increase a bit. And the last switch will short the rest of the diodes, so the fan will work at maximum speed. I also added a small voltmeter to check the fan voltage. I will use this small heatsink to mount the thermal switches, and I will add some thermal paste for a better transfer. All the components, including the thermometer probe, will be tightened with a copper wire, which is actually a problem, as I will explain in a minute. And now the heatsink will heat up. Let's see if it works. At 45 degrees, the first switch turns on the fan at a low speed with 3.1 volts. And immediately after 2 seconds, the second switch turns on and powers the fan with 5.4 volts. So far it's not very accurate. And at 61 degrees Celsius, the last switch shorts the remaining diodes and the fan runs at maximum speed, as it should. So what's wrong with the first switch? Why doesn't the voltage increase gradually? Well, some of these cheap bimetal switches have a problem. There is actually a short between the switch capsule and one of the pins. You need to test them before shorting an IC or a heatsink. And if you use them with 110 or 230 volts, it's recommended to insulate them electrically. Otherwise you can get a big shock. Other switches make a short with one of the pins only if you squeeze them. 
they are pretty fragile and can be damaged easily. So that's probably why the first switch is triggered so late and so close to the second switch, because I tighten it too much with the copper wire. But the third switch works fine at 61 degrees Celsius. So this is a cheap and not very accurate way to cool down the components based on their temperature, if you don't tighten the switches too hard that is. To avoid the short circuit problem you need to insulate them electrically or you can use plastic or ceramic thermal switches. I plan to use this type of switches in future projects, after I test them some more. So thanks for watching this video and I also want to thank all my patrons for their support. If you enjoyed this video please share it and leave a comment below. Bye!